Hello and welcome back to another video. This is part two of our horror games on the Xbox 360. So let's jump right in. I wanted to start off by saying thank you for joining me once again. If you have checked out the first video, awesome. If this is your first time here, I'll leave a link to the first video in the description. Otherwise, subscribe if you like what you're seeing, give it a thumbs up and comment. We love comments. We try to respond to every single one of them and that's all awesome. All right, let's just jump in and continue uh, more of the horror series on the Xbox 360 that I covered in the first video. The first game is Dead Island. This is the Game of the Year edition that comes with all the DLC. And uh, this is more of an open world zombie co-op game. Again, with the uh, zombie co-op games, very popular around this time. Um, and probably the most famous for its uh, riveting trailer at the time. I think that's what caught everyone's eye and attention. Um, personally, I, I, I played it pretty soon after it came out, actually. It wasn't like I was chasing this uh, day one or anything, because uh, at the time I still had plenty of games to play and catch up on on the 360. Uh, but it was it was good for what it was, and I hadn't played much of the kind of open world type of action RPG. I guess you could say that. You have weapons that you can upgrade and break and have to find replacement for them. You could drive around to different locations and you know they really encouraged the co-op of course um but uh, I, I think it was a good entry into that sort of game um i think in hindsight now again hindsight's a wonderful thing but um last time i went back and played this game it, it hasn't aged well i know obviously they remastered um uh the dead island games on uh, newer consoles and stuff so i haven't played those yet uh, but i played this one all the way through and uh, did all the achievements for it, so I enjoyed it at the time. Um, so if you've never played De Dead Island, that's uh, pretty much what you can expect. It's lots of zombies. There's um, uh, you can use guns, you can use melee weapons. Um, it's a lot of side missions to do, and but definitely one of those games that are better played with someone else. Um, like I said, you can I think you can do up to four people. Uh, so that aspect of it was great at least, but uh, overall, it's probably not as good of a game as I wanted to remember. Um, but uh, either way, it's a, it's a good place to start. The achievements are uh, also like kind of like the typical zombie stuff, kill with different types of weapons, you know, and you have to play through with multiple characters, that sort of thing. So it has DLC as well, which is um, again, very typical, like the zombie horde mode uh, type, uh, game type. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, if you have, again, friends to play with, people to play with, then it should be more manageable as well. But uh, overall, it's a, it's a decent experience in, uh, in co-op, I would say. So, and likewise with the next one, the sequel, Dead Island Riptide, which came out, uh, I don't know the full story with this game, but uh, played through this again with uh, a couple of friends. I think this is maybe three player? I don't know, it could be four player as well, but... Uh, Something stands out, there's something with three people in this one that you have to do. Maybe that's like the bare minimum. Uh, both of them have that kind of, you need to do different quests with different types of people. And I think the first one had uh, achievements to play with different people online for a certain amount of time. Um, so that was a pretty interesting approach as well. Uh, but Riptide kind of followed uh, the same thing here. You could actually uh, transfer your character to this one. So if you had maxed out your... Um, character and that's where I think Dead Island was going for that Borderlands uh, kind of approach to it as well with uh, the leveling up and the weapons and kind of getting different versions of that weapon the more you leveled up so uh, so I guess I, I should have said that yeah so I guess I did have some experience with that from uh, playing Borderlands um, but um, but this one was um, it felt like to me it was more of a rush job for some reason like this didn't feel as fleshed out um, the animations were kind of strange in this one. The voice acting was kind of worse. Um, it still was an okay experience, though, to um, kind of close out this... Uh, not close out the series, but, like, close out these two games uh, in continuation of the first one. But 
uh, very similar, obviously. You went to slightly different locations here. Um, but again, nothing really stands out here in the achievement list. You just have to like get up to a higher level and play through all the story stuff and different characters, that kind of stuff too. So, But you know, another decent uh, co-op game. Uh, I, I want to say you're more in the like a swamp areas and you're on a boat and stuff like that. So, uh, But uh, yeah, it, it's again, it's good to have in your collection. You know, these are... Uh, this one didn't have any DLC or anything like that, so um, again, just find someone to play with and this should be a pretty decent experience. And then the last uh, game in the series, which I don't know if a lot of people actually know about this one, but um, this is Escape Dead Island. If you want the physical, obviously, this is what it looks like. And uh, this is a very different game from the other two. This was made by a different company as well. All, all published by Deep Silver, but this was made by a completely different company. This is a third-person uh, zombie action horror game, uh, while the other ones were more open-world. This kind of has that open-world feel to it, uh, but it's not really. It's more linear, um, and it introduced um, more stealth as well, uh, which I as you have probably guessed from other videos now that I enjoy that. Uh, so you can kind of sneak up on zombies and uh, it's the same type of thing though. You know, they have different special infected in a sense like Left 4 Dead. And uh, they would just, uh, you know, if you alerted someone that you shouldn't have alerted, right? Then a whole horde of zombies come attacking you and then you have to figure it out. Uh, it's a slightly tougher game, I would say too. So it's not... Um, it, it definitely lends itself more for the stealth route uh, than uh, than just straight up action horror and shooting and uh, melee combat. So, but of course you have all that present. But uh, it is much tougher yet to get around the enemies or uh, fight the enemies if you alert them in certain scenarios and certain uh, levels. Uh, but just keep in mind, yeah, the uh, Escape Dead Island is very different. Uh, the achievement list too has some DLC, like I mentioned. You know, it's you should be able to snag that for free. If you're into the zombie genre like these, you can't really go wrong with these games. Then you'll have a good time. Uh, Escape Dead Island is not co-op though, so uh, you'll have to go at that one alone. All right, next series uh, has gotten a lot of attention lately with the latest re remaster, I guess it would be. <laughs> and that's uh, Dead Rising. This was an exclusive for the Xbox 360. And Too Many was one of the first games they played. And I think that's why so many people have uh, fond memories of this game. Um, I have uh, played this one. I started it. Um, after playing the newer Dead Rising, I played Dead Rising 2 and Dead Rising 3. So it's a little bit harder to get into the older uh, Dead Rising game. But uh, I'll go ahead and play that. Um, Hoping that I'll play it in October. You know, I'll play it this month, uh, and then we'll see how that goes. But um, I think what stands out here as well in the achievements is the Seven Day Survivor. I think that's the notorious one. That I think it's real life, like 14 hours that you have to stay alive. Um, which I don't know. You do bathroom breaks, or uh, you can pause the game. I think, but still, it's uh, <laughs> get up early in the morning and start playing that game mode and. Uh, try to survive for that long, but yeah, it's I guess it's a commitment for one day You have to uh, take a day off of work to do this achievement or do it on the weekend. So uh, But yeah, that's uh, that's the reality of that one. Otherwise, it's one of those funny things that I think every Achievement in the Dead Rising games at least the earlier ones were like 20 gamer score. So they didn't really differentiate um, how difficult or how um, Yeah, how small that task was they just did everything um, Everything at 20G. So, but yeah, I'll hopefully get around to this one, especially now with the re remaster, uh, whatever they call it, just came out. So, um, I'm sure there's a lot of buzz around it. And then uh, moving to Dead Rising 2. This was, like I said, the first one that I played. Uh, and I'm not sure how that came about, why I started with this one, but, uh, you know, I stay true to myself and just uh, hit up the sequels first. Um,. But I enjoyed this game. I played this in co-op with a friend and uh, there was some multiplayer achievements that we worked on as well with other people and um, and played for fun as well. I mean, it's it's very interesting uh, game modes and they kind of um, they kind of rotate uh, what the next game mode should be. So you don't always know what you're going to get. So but uh, 
It was, uh, what was it called? Terror is Reality or something like that. So it was a fun little spin, had some good commentary, right? So, uh, but uh, the game itself, I think, was good. You know, took some getting used to. Um, I didn't really know that whole time pressure and that you couldn't do every single mission in one playthrough. Uh, so that was a little bit uh, difficult to get used to. I think that's probably the biggest uh, issue that people have playing these games. Whether you love it or hate it, then uh, you're just going to have to have that time constraint, which uh, which can be difficult, of course, you know, because you want to try to cram everything in, but then you realize you can't get it all done um, right away. But, uh, but you know, it, it warrants multiple playthroughs. You have to get your PP level up um, to level 50 or whatever, get all the combos and stuff like that. So it's it's a fun experience in general. And uh, I would say, yeah, even even more fun in co-op, except for when you're going for speed runs and stuff like that, then you're just kind of rushing through and don't get to uh, fully experience the game. But um, I think, um, again, uh, looking at this one versus the first one, they, they obviously improved, but I understand why people have nostalgia about the first game. But uh, again, yeah, like I said, the achievements are also very similar. It does not have the uh, seven day survivor in this one, uh, but obviously they introduce co-op and all that stuff. So you have to play through it with someone um, uh, and do all that stuff and multiplayer. So, but otherwise it's, it's kind of what you would expect from a Dead Rising game at this point. So lots of miscellaneous stuff and weapons and of course, killing 53,000 something zombies like they um, enjoyed going back and forth with Left 4 Dead on. So there, there you go. All right, and I wanted to show the Steelbook actually too. So that one, this one's pretty cool. I think it um, had, I don't know if this was kind of part of a special edition kind of thing. Uh, it says Zombrex here and it has like the little pill, uh, <laughs> it's like the days of the week. So I think this one's pretty cool actually. Uh, so if you haven't seen this one, it even comes with a um, like a guide to dealing with uh, zombie infections. So obviously it has a good sense of humor in this game too. So although it takes itself seriously, but uh, yeah, it has like two discs on this one. So this is pretty cool. I like the um, I like the I'll put that right here next to it actually. But really cool steelbook. So if you haven't seen this or if you come across it, it's you know worth uh, checking out if you're into that. Okay, and the last one which I haven't played yet. Uh, that's uh, Dead Rising 2 off the record. And uh, this is just uh, kind of a spin-off of... Um, uh, I, don't, I think it's like a different point of view with Frank West from the first game. So um, so that's also co-op, uh, just like Dead Rising 2. But uh, like I said, I don't know much about it. So, But it looks like it's the same... Um, same mall, same everything, uh, except for you play with different characters, and I'm sure you have different requirements there too. Again, the uh, achievements are co-op uh, specific and co-op related, um, so same thing there. I don't think it has any multiplayer like Dead Rising 2 did, but it is one that maybe I will um, try to get Skorol to play with me, because um, we're going back and forth, should we do it on the 360 or should we do it on the Xbox One, So or the Series X? The the remastered one so we'll have to see uh, but uh, this was actually one that didn't get um, a physical release on the uh, Xbox one so I just wanted to put that out there too these two uh, the first two did but uh, this was a digital only release on Xbox one so this one um, might be rare someday I don't know uh, I would almost think it would be all right next one here is uh, I I played both of these but I only have one in our collection right now because I, uh, for some reason, I bought them from GameStop and I beat them and I just returned them or traded them back in, uh, which is very unlike me. I don't typically do that. Uh, and now I regret it seeing the price on these games. So uh, so we have Saw 2, Flesh and Blood, which is the most expensive one. But, um, you know, it's uh, yeah harder to find these. And I should have known at the time because this is one of those weird... This is one of those weird titles that um, kind of flew under the radar as well. It's a Konami game. So, uh, so uh, yeah, like I said, I beat, I completed both of them. Uh, they're pretty easy completions overall. Um, the games themselves, I think um, they follow, obviously, along the lines of the movies. Um, they, it's different character and stuff like that. And you do... You know, it's a very dramatic opening scene on these games, um, both of them actually. Um, but in terms of like the first one, it was a little bit 
more repetitive, I feel. So if I were to rate the two games uh, from what I played and the achievements and stuff, I think I like the second one a little bit better. So it kind of more starts out, I feel, thinking that it's going to be a horror game, but then it turns into more of a it's more of a brawler as well. It still has that horror feel to it. And the, obviously, if you've seen the environments in the movies, um, then you know exactly what uh, what type of game it will be. But it doesn't test you really in the way of, hey, you fear for your life as much. You have puzzles that you can fail, uh, which, you know, they still did a decent job at that. But after a while, you kind of figure out how to do the puzzles. And it's not as life-threatening, so to speak, as uh, you maybe want that tension of like, hey, if I fail now, then it's going to be game over, which it is, but you just kind of start at the next checkpoint. So uh, maybe if they made it into a roguelite, it would have been a, a different experience. That that would have been an interesting game, actually, if you actually if you actually died and had to come back as a different character. If you can get your hands on these games, I think they're decent enough for what they are and what they're trying to be. Um, so like I said, I think the second one is slightly better. Uh, felt like there was uh, just a little bit better gameplay and um, the story is, uh, I don't, yeah, I don't want to spoil anything obviously, but it felt like a little bit, they improved on what the first one, and the first one got a little bit repetitive after a while, so. Uh, but overall, I mean, it's great to have in a collection, obviously, now knowing how expensive these are. I think they're also expensive on the PS3, not just on the 360, so. Uh, luckily enough, though, I... I, I was able to get this one back in the collection for ten dollars, um, maybe like four or five years ago. Um, so it's it's definitely possible to get those deals, but uh, I think um, the way it was in the past with uh, GameStop being a eight dollar game, yes, that's you can't beat that anymore. So that's uh, that's how it is now. But uh, and again, like I said, the achievements uh, are pretty straightforward here. Nothing really that would warrant like a difficult survival horror type game. But I would still put it in the horror cat category though. All right, we're coming up on some uh, well-known series here. There's obviously a lot of games in these series, but. Uh, I like to particularly focus on the one on the 360 because that's where I played them first. I don't have a lot of experience with them. Uh, but let's start off with Silent Hill Homecoming. And I think this was a pretty big deal because not a whole lot of Silent Hill had been released on the Xbox 360 at this point. Or any... Uh, well, there was two Silent Hill games to my knowledge on the original Xbox. Uh, but not the primary console for Konami to release these. Um, so I actually started this a couple years ago. Um, I have not played it all the way through. I probably will try my best to play this one a lot more this month. Uh, alongside, I think I mentioned Dead Rising uh, earlier. And uh, it's one of those games that, uh, yeah, to get into a series. But that's pretty much all I got on that one. I never will claim to be a Silent Hill uh, expert. Um, I know the Silent Hill 2 remake just came out uh, recently. So it's uh, one of those things where... I really need to catch up on Silent Hill. So I really want to go back and play the older ones too. Uh, but this one, from what I've played so far, I mean, it seems decent. Um, I can't really say that I didn't like it. So, but uh, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on, on Silent Hill, like especially the ones on Xbox 360, because uh, I don't know much. And that's why I'm just going to jump to the next one here, which is uh, Silent Hill Downpour. Again, uh, made by a Western company, I believe, is what they would refer that to. Or, uh, and so this is this one. Um, I think both of these have kind of fluctuated. I'm not going to talk too much about pricing. You know, I mention it when I feel like it's relevant. But uh, the prices on these two have kind of gone up and down the last few years. Um, I bought these, like, yeah, five, six, seven years ago, maybe. Um, so quite a while ago. Uh, but the same thing here, I started both of them for some reason, so I was like really determined I was going to get into Silent Hill, uh, but I haven't finished this one either. Uh, but it's it's slightly different, I would say, from Homecoming. So this one though, and you know, again, let me know in the comments about this. The feeling I got from this, uh, because I'd played more of, um, I've gone back and forth with this game a little bit uh, the last few years, but I played Evil Within 2. Um, and this game kind of reminded me of that same kind of world that it was trying to do, like slightly kind of semi-open world and you did some side missions and stuff. So 
I don't know if uh, I don't know if Evil Within 2 was trying to go for this kind of format, but that's just my first impression in a sense from what I played. Uh, and actually, I think I played both of these games kind of the same amount uh, of length. So, uh, but again, I, I had no problems with this game either, and uh, it looks like uh, both achievement lists are doable. There's nothing that I can remember that's gonna set me back uh, a tremendous amount of hours, and so uh, I'm looking forward to these, but. I probably should finish Homecoming first, uh, but again, great collecting for this. I'm glad I got this a while ago because, like I said, the prices on these two have fluctuated like crazy. I, I think they've come down a little bit now, so it might be worth uh, pursuing that at this point. But yeah, I am looking forward to doing some Silent Hill this month. Not the remake, unfortunately, but uh, we do have a PS5 finally, so that's good. Okay, and the last one is, uh, speaking of the older Silent Hill here, yeah, so Silent Hill HD Collection. I have uh, naturally, based on my previous comments here, not played this yet. But I do own this digitally, actually. So um, so that's why I haven't opened it yet, because it's one of those things where uh, it just remains a good collectible at this point. So that one has uh, Silent Hill 2 and 3. Uh, I'm not sure why they never did Silent Hill 1, I guess, but um, maybe it's too old or it just didn't uh, port too well. Uh, but uh, also two games that I, uh, I've been dying to get into, and I know people say that this is not the best way to play them, but, uh, you know, if I do achievements, this is the way I'm going to play it. So, you know, um, I might still check out um, the older ones on PS2, but... Again, it's one of those things where, like, if I don't have a, that console hooked up and stuff, then, yeah, if there's a remaster, I'll, I'll try it there, too. So, uh, but, you know, like I've always said as well, and like a lot of people would probably recommend this to uh, experience the original first and then kind of do the ports, remasters, remakes kind of thing. So this one's obviously relevant right now with Silent Hill 2 remake coming out. So, uh, again, really great. The, the only three that came out on 360 and... You know, it's one of those things that I would recommend trying to add to your collection if you are a collector. Uh, otherwise, achievement-wise on this last one here, the HD collection, uh, is a little bit more troublesome, I think, than uh, the other two. So, but again, I haven't studied it uh, uh, in great detail yet, so, but I'm sure when I get around to it, I'll, um, I'll know for sure. But yeah, definitely, this is one of those situations where I would love to hear from you guys. Thoughts on these games? Um, are they any better, uh, worse than some of the older ones? I'm sure they, uh, sure people have a lot of opinions about Silent Hill. Same as the next one here, and I think you probably know what's going to come next because it's the only series that I have not talked about yet, and that is, of course, Resident Evil. Uh, this is Resident Evil 5, and believe it or not, which I think more more than likely you'll believe it because this is my first Resident Evil game. Uh, it has a cool little hint book in here too, which is kind of funny. Like I don't, <laughs> you don't see that very often actually, but I guess I got my hands on it. It's like a tiny uh, hint book. Um, so yeah, this was my first Resident Evil game. Uh, and at this point, obviously I had no expectations. I had mentioned that I'd um, seen some gameplay of a Resident Evil 4 and I was very intrigued by that. Like that was one game that I really wanted to get the GameCube for. Um, but obviously afterwards it's been remastered uh, for every console under the sun. So, uh, and in Resident Evil 4, you can actually get as part of a Japanese release with, uh, I think it's code Veronica. So you can get that one on the Xbox 360. Um, but I don't have that one currently in, in our collection, but I'm looking to get that at some point. Uh, but speaking of, yeah, Resident Evil 5 uh, was a game that I started out, I'm trying to fully remember if I did co-op first but obviously had co-op um, and then I played through it. And for me, the hardest thing were the controls. And um, I had played this, I think after Dead Space 2 actually. So it was certainly a little bit of an adjustment that uh, obviously not tank controls at that point, but it's a little bit awkward, stiff movements to move around and aim your gun, right? You weren't exactly at that point of moving and shooting. So, uh, but you know, again, it's one of those things you just get used to, right? And people, I, I, I remember my first impression was like, I can't believe people think this is cool that you have to stand and shoot and you can't move. Uh, but you know, it's one of those first impressions, right? You always listen to people talk about a game. 
uh, and that's the impression that you get. So, but I, I can say that I, I had no problems with this game. I thought it was a, a good enough game to where I enjoyed it, and I played it since in uh, later years, and I still appreciate the game. Actually, I, I played it on PC. I played it on. Um, I haven't played it on Xbox One yet, the re remaster. But uh, I again, no problems with it. Uh, there's some multiplayer you have to do for achievements in here that are not my cup of tea really but um as you probably hear in uh, me talking about some of the other resident evil games coming up but um but it was still a, a good playthrough good in co-op um I had some dlc there that were uh to my recollection a little bit challenging there was one achievement like i think it's called run the gauntlet or something that was uh <laughs> very frustrating um but maybe it's because you know my co-op partner and i we were trying to speed run it so maybe that was the problem we didn't take our time but i think there is a time limit at the end of that one which is kind of a pain so uh, but uh, yeah that's no, a good co-op game i think so you know might not be what people would expect of an older resident evil game and that's fair i think a lot of people get very attached to the nostalgia and the retro aspect of some of these games right so um it's harder to evolve with the times and um so but for me that's where I started, and I had no problems with this game. So, uh, achievements, though, like, you know, it's a um, couple playthroughs. Um, you can do some speedruns, obviously, to get, like, Rocket Launcher to make your harder playthroughs a little bit easier. Uh, but again, you know, it's one of those things where it, this works well solo and in co-op. So, I, I think they did a decent job with this game. Uh, and then real quick here, I want to show the other uh, editions of this game, too, because apparently I have a lot of them. So, here's the, <laughs> here's the gold edition for the game. Uh, and this one came with uh, came with a code for all the DLC. Um, and uh, I don't think this had a manual. I must have had a, a another manual that I put in here. But I think it just came with a code, which I, I must have tossed because I don't see it in here anymore. But uh, the disc is the same. So it's more or less one of those, um, yeah, which now with the 360 Marketplace... Uh, having uh, closed then you won't be able to redeem that anyway i think so it's um but yeah if you had played it in the past and gotten your hands on this one brand new then uh, you could redeem all the dlc so that was pretty cool and different artwork too uh and then lastly i have the steelbook which i think actually this is one of the most common steelbooks that i see in game stores um and i've always wondered we bought this used and uh, have no idea what this autograph is so i don't know someone brought this to a convention and had this like autograph by someone i have no idea so if you know what signature this if you've ever seen it i know that's a long shot but we tried to ask like on instagram and many years ago and got no reply so maybe this is just uh, a joke and uh, <laughs> the previous owner signed it to make it look like it was something special but uh, i haven't seen it on any other steelbook so uh, yeah so this one has two discs i think that's like the behind the scenes kind of thing so so there you have that one it's pretty cool though like i, I like this steelbook although it's seemingly very common i might have to put this one on top all right let's do that so you know five. So if you come in after going to the bathroom or going to the kitchen, and then you come back and you see the five, you know what it is. So <laughs> I can only assume people take breaks on longer videos. So I can't say that you're gonna intently sit and watch everything. So uh, okay. So and the next one that came out on the 360 was Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City, and this was very different from you know again not speaking as a resident evil expert or anything but having now played this game uh multiple times on the both like games for windows live and on xbox 360 this is very different uh it's more of a squad based shooter like action horror game um whereas obviously resident evil 5 would be considered action horror and some survival horror but it's still more action but this one is like full out third person shooter and uh, i can't say i'm the biggest fan of this one um scarola and i played this in co-op i i have to apologize to her like frequently for putting her through that because this is uh <laughs> whether you play with friends or spouses i mean this this is not a great experience in my opinion and has some um, some pretty annoying achievements to go with it as well with um with multiplayer and it has uh, i don't think there are any co-op achievements actually but you can play through it maybe one 
but uh, most of them are like S ranks, professional difficulty in that sort. So, and it has some DLC as well that um, gives a little bit more story to it. So that one wasn't too bad. So, you know, it's just kind of playing through it for me. It just, you know, even after playing, um, yeah, Resident Evil 5, it just didn't feel like a Resident Evil game. It's just one of those frantic, very unbalanced game, in my opinion. The enemies, uh, the zombies were very aggressive and your bullet sponges um, from what I can remember. And so, um, yeah, I, so this is probably of all the ones I've done so far in, in these videos uh, i would not recommend this game at all so it's like if it's okay if you go for achievements you want to get play all the games in a series but i wouldn't expect too much from this one and i know it never got good reviews and that shouldn't be a uh, a surprise to anyone but um yeah that's one of those games there that uh, i have to be honest about it so can't uh, try to be as positive as possible but it's hard with certain games so I will say that uh, what's better than the actual game is the Steelbook right here. So probably the first time a Steelbook has been better than a game. Uh, and has a cool slip cover as well. Uh, I bought this for, I mean, it wasn't cheap when I bought this, but uh, uh, it's actually missing some stuff in this one. So I'm gonna take the slip cover off here and then uh, I'm gonna look inside. Yeah, it's a pretty cool um, here it's the spine, hopefully. And then the umbrella core um, logo on the back. But yeah, really cool steelbook. I've wanted this for a while, actually, as a collector. And then it has these little badges here, or whatever they call them on the back. Uh, and then just the regular manual and, um, and the regular disc here. So I'm missing, uh, from what I can tell, the um, postcards or whatever that is. The... Um, yeah, art and stuff like that. So I have the patches, but uh, yeah. So either way, I'm not, I'm not too concerned about that. I, I like to have complete things, but if I buy stuff like this, if I find it in good condition, then I'm not going to worry too much about uh, that. So, but that's a good one to have in a collection, just like the um, Resident Evil 5 Steelbook. So uh, <laughs> moving on to more of a weird time, I guess, in Resident Evil's history. So um, I guess I came in at the wrong time. I don't know. Uh, must have been. But uh, here's Resident Evil 6, which uh, I think is kind of a mixed bag for a lot of people. Like some people really like it and take it for what it is. Uh, other people can't stand this game. Um, and I, I think I'm somewhere in the middle. Like I think uh, this game um, had some good ideas. But I think it, the execution was really poor. That's that's really what I would say about this. Where I, I like the campaign structure where you played as different characters. So you could choose to start wherever you wanted. But it was, it was weird gameplay to where I, I never felt like actually the controls were very good in this game. So where maybe something like Raccoon City. I also didn't like the controls there. But you felt like you were shooting at least at the target here. There was like so much recoil I felt and it could have been the weapons it could have been I didn't have enough upgrades or something like that but you know as a starting point it, the shooting is all over the place in here and I think the camera is kind of awkward too but otherwise I mean it's more recognizable as a Resident Evil game I would say if you played 5 it's just a little bit more fast paced way more action and it's a QTE fest like no other. But I got through it. I mean, I don't even think I played this in co-op. It might have been better in co-op. I'm not sure. Um, or if it even had co-op. I know it had multiplayer achievements and all that stuff. So you have, you know, human players. And then you also have zombies. And so it's just you have double whammy in a sense. Where I've never... And actually Resident Evil 5 had the same thing. So um, yeah, I'm... Uh, I don't know, I guess that's PvPVE or something like that. So, uh, but yeah, some people like it. I don't. Uh, and the achievements are just, um, yeah, playing through on the different difficulties and all the campaigns. And uh, like I said, the multiplayer. But um, it's one of those games that you'll get through it. But um, it's uh, maybe not the best Resident Evil experience after, you know, the little experience I have. That's really the impression that I get from it. So, but uh, yeah. I did complete this one as well. And then um, this is more or less a remake. So now we're moving into what I think are a little bit underrated, but maybe with my limited experience in a sense, I played a lot of the games, obviously. But uh, and at this point, I've also played Resident Evil 4, the old one. So but yeah, I think uh, even this is a remake um, from a 3DS game. But this is Resident Evil Revelations. And um, I 
thought this was a pretty good game, actually. I, I did enjoy this one. Um, I, yeah, I did enjoy this game with uh, knowing that it was more, you know, a little bit similar to the older Resident Evil games. And I think that's probably why some people enjoy that more than 5 and 6, for instance. But knowing that it was a 3DS game, I don't know how it plays on that one. But I thought it played well on the 360. And you can kind of tell it was a slightly shorter game that they wanted to extend uh, to make it a little bit longer. Uh, but it, again, I could at least appreciate the difference from the other previous games uh, that I just talked about. You know, it was a little bit slower pace. You had uh, like a research tool that you could do to gain some XP or gain whatever it was. Um, and then the weapons were just normal weapons. It was kind of more stop and shoot rather than run and shoot. So yeah, you, you had more of that survival horror feel in, the, in this game than action, but it's probably more classified as action, but you still could see a combination of both of them. So, but uh, I, I would recommend this one, maybe from some of the previous ones I've talked about here, because this, uh, this has a little slower pace and better story most likely too, so. Uh, yeah, I, I like that one. And then the achievement list, I, I this one is, yeah, much longer and more difficult, I think, because um, you have to do multiple playthroughs. There's um, the hardest difficulty, no dying kind of thing on, uh, I think it's on normal difficulty or above. And then you have raid mode, which is you can play it solo, you can play it in co-op. So it's more kind of like a sort of a horde mode, but you go through different scenarios of scenes or levels you played in the game. And then you just kind of um, do that in... Um, in a time constraint and you have to get accuracy and stuff like that so so i think it was an interesting twist on it but uh, i'm i'm nowhere near done with that because <laughs> probably need to find a good co-op partner to finish this game so uh and i'm not going to put scroll through it because i've already put her through the uh awful uh, raccoon city so um so yeah i'll uh, probably just have to find someone to play through that with all right, and now that I'm running out of space, but we have the last game here, so I uh, I might just stack it on top of the last one here. Uh, and this is one that I, for me, this is probably one of my favorite ones that I played, uh, and that's uh, Resident Evil Revelations 2. Um, and I'm not, yeah, it's still sealed here, but uh, I played this on Xbox One, actually. So it was like episodic, so a little bit different from the first uh, Revelations game. But this one also had like, an interesting co-op mechanic similar to what I would say in like Fear 3, where one person is the one that has the weapon and then the other one just has a flashlight and kind of a distraction method, you, which you can switch between the two characters, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, but if you wanted to play with someone, I would say this might have been just like a local co-op thing, which is unusual for such a late game in the 360s life. But uh, yeah, I, I completed this one on the Xbox One, actually, and uh, it has some interesting game modes to get through for the achievements. There's um, one that stands out to me. It's like invisible mode, where literally every enemy is invisible. So you would have almost had to memorize the... Uh, enemy locations, how they spawn, how they, you know, walk around. Uh, very tough, actually. Like, but after playing through it, like, two, three times at least, um, and since they're episodes, they're a little bit shorter, but yeah, that one was an interesting challenge, yeah, and uh, so you just kind of have to do that, and there's obviously some DLC where you play as different characters as well. So I, I think this was a pretty well-rounded experience. I know it's probably not going to be at the top of um, people's list of best Resident Evil games, but I think this one's a little bit overlooked. You know, I think this uh, this game uh, was really good. I really liked it, and I can't wait to play it on the 360. That was uh, the Resident Evil games that is on the 360 at least, minus Resident Evil 4 HD that was released in Japan. But uh, hopefully we'll get our hands on that soon. So I wanted to thank you guys again for watching and stopping by our channel. Consider subscribing. That always helps us out. Like the video so it reaches a bigger audience of people that want to watch this kind of stuff. And don't forget to leave us a comment. I'm sure if you're into horror games, you have a lot to say about the games that I just went through. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.